Villa lie joint third in the Premiership. Well, their opponents tonight are Chester, who are bottom of the pile, 92nd for the record, but they won for the first time this season on Saturday. Our commentator at this one, John Roder. Of the 11 players that won the League Cup for Aston Villa at Wembley in 1996, five remain at the club, three are included in tonight's team, Southgate, Egeog and Taylor. Peter Enkelman stays in goal with David James still injured. Just the one change to the team that beat Bradford, Julian Jochim is a substitute. Up front, alongside Dion Dublin, is Darius Vassell, who had such an impact when he replaced Jochim at the weekend. Chester recorded their first league win of the season at Brighton on Saturday. A 90th minute goal from Manuel Agogo on loan from Sheffield Wednesday. He's not playing tonight, neither is their other on loan player, Michael Blackwood, on loan coincidentally from Aston Villa. In come Neil Fisher and a name familiar to older Villa fans, Gary Shelton played here. Andrew lines up for Chester, he's one of two changes. Referee Scott Matheson gets us underway. In reality, it'll be a huge shock if Villa fail to progress through to the third round. They're 87 places above Chester, who, despite winning at Brighton on Saturday, are bottom of the Football League. And the third division side haven't kept a clean sheet in their last 17 matches. They last did so when beating Barnett 3-0 on Easter Monday. Barry, Hendry, Dublin, Hendry once more, Lee Hendry accelerates, good save, the follow-up is just over. Darius Vassell putting the ball over, so close there to putting Villa ahead. Hendry surging run, it was a good save from Brown. And there was just the slightest deflection off Brown, and it's gone out for a corner. Just the keeper will be relieved about that double save. Punches clear well, does Brown. So early promise from Aston Villa. Southgate's cross. Egiog meets it. That was spectacular. And it nearly came off as well for Dion Dublin. Watson. That's a good ball. Over the head of Andy Shelton. Hendry faced by Davidson. It's deep towards Boateng! And George Boateng gives Villa the lead. It's a lead they've been threatening to take virtually since the kickoff. Boateng brings Villa Park to its feet. Hendry's cross, just that little touch to set up a little bit of space for himself. And Boateng met it with a perfectly placed header. Brown came across to narrow the angle, but Berteng simply headed it back across him. 1-0 to Villa. Watson. Hendry's come short, looking for the pass on the edge of the area. Berteng. Taylor sweeps it to his left. Barry with a shot. And Brown got right behind that shot which was rising all the way Taylor lays it through to Dublin Bertang's in some space that'll come off Doughty and Villa have another corner Villa shirts in and around the area for Alan Thompson to aim for. And there is one, and it's a second goal for Aston Villa. Villa double their lead just after the half hour. Ian Taylor with the clear header.
And he had so much time to turn that in past Wayne Brown. That's a question really of Villa just remaining patient and working their way through the massed ranks of gold shirts. But they won't do it with a pass like that. They may do so now. Vassal makes the run through and the flag goes up on the far side. But that was highly debatable because Chester's right back was certainly slightly further back than his teammates. Well, that is a highly debatable decision by the assistant referee. this near side to Bote. So by Doughty, it'll fall kindly to Watson. Watson accelerates, taking on Neil Fisher. Towards Dublin! Dion Dublin trying to angle that header into the bottom corner. He got the height of the header right, but sadly for Villa, not quite the direction. five goals this season already for Aston Villa. Villa will bring it away and Chester have committed men up front. A chance for Villa to break away. The long ball through, looking for Vassal to get onto, but it was just cut out by Woods who makes a hash of his second clearance and Vassal nearly capitalised upon it. to a close, one in which Villa have absolutely dominated George Boateng giving them the lead early on it was followed up by a second from Ian Taylor and Villa 2-0 ahead on the night 3-0 ahead on aggregate half time at Villa Park, Aston Villa 2 Chester City 0 pass and then makes a run outside but Watson has his shirt pulled, the free kick taken quickly Hendry, Thompson Barry's in plenty of space on this near side, the Villa left. This is through to Hendry, looking for a hat-trick, sets up Thompson. It may fall through to Dublin, still no Thompson. Goes past one and puts it in. Alan Thompson, as Villa notch their fifth of the night. And their third inside the opening six minutes of the second period. thought about a shot Thompson looked as though he'd lost it there but just carried on and Thompson finds the back of the net for the first time this season right with the throw played back for Richardson looking for Beckett who goes down in the area and Chester have a penalty Well, a chance for Chester to salvage some pride from this tie. Beckett pushed over there by Hugo Ekiok. The ball through was dangerous. Beckett goes to ground. Chester have a spot kick. And what delight it's brought to those travelling Chester supporters who've made their way down the M6 in such but the referee is ruling that the penalty must be taken again presumably for encroachment by some of the Chester players Acts 2 is saved and that's rough justice on Chester you have to say Luke Beckett didn't strike that in the same confident manner as he had struck the first penalty Mercy. This is Jochim, who breaks clear. Is this number six for Villa? It is. Julian Jochim gets his fourth goal of the season. And Jochim kept his poise and his calm there. A lovely through ball from Paul Merson. Jochim timed his run to perfection. Goal number six for Villa. 
but the referee has given Churchill offside. It's a very late call indeed from the referee. So Joachim's goal will not stand. Here comes Chester. Beckett. Keeps possession well. Richardson who's come into a far more advanced position for Chester City. Pendry has three men ahead of him and the flag goes up on this near side. All three looks to be offside and that goal will not count. Samuel has Thompson outside him. Samuel continues his run. Thompson infield to Hendry. Hendry to Burst. Mercer. Is anyone going to have a shot at goal? No, they're not, because Chester bring it away with Matthew Doughty. Beckett, who missed that penalty, having had to retake it. Richardson. That's the substitute. Carson. Right. Villa just pumped the ball forward towards Merson, but Chester able to gather with ease. into the final few seconds of this match as Beckett lays it through to Richardson but the saving tackle came in from Hugo Ekiog alert to the last and that is the last action in tonight's fixture high fives for Aston Villa and John Gregory two goals in the first half and then two inside the opening two minutes of the second half from Lee Hendry which really came beyond doubt a fifth from Alan Thompson Luke Beckett scored from a penalty kick but had to retake it and missed the subsequent spot kick. Jochim came on to try and make it six for Villa but he couldn't do so. And the Villa fans will go home happy from this match. They know that their side should have won comfortably and indeed their side have won comfortably. Aston Villa five, Chester City nil on the night. Aston Villa through to the next round, 6-0 on aggregate. I've not really been disappointed with the outcome of games. I've been, um, apart from two, you know, the two that we lost to Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, other than that, I've been delighted with everything else. Um, certainly our performances here at Villa Park have been solid, if not spectacular. And we've got um, good points from, from our home, uh, home matches. So um, I've been pleased, pleased with that. I mean, uh, you have to get it all in perspective. You know, I mean, it was against Chester tonight, but... Uh, the teams are still there to be beaten, so I mean, I'm pleased with um, with everything. How it's worked out tonight, it's been good. Well, to take nothing away from you or the team, that was easy, wasn't it? Um, it turned out to be easy, yeah. Um, but I mean, them games can always tend to be quite hard as well, especially if they nick a goal. Um, we've done well, kept the ball well, and then um, got the result we wanted. You know, to get five goals in any in any match is always uh, pleasing from my point of view, from a manager's point of view, and um, to have been five nil up so early in the game, I think. Um, yeah, I got a little bit excited because, in all honesty, I could see double figures coming and, uh, to be perfectly blunt, um, it should have been. The result speaks for itself. Bob Hall, the man asking the questions at Villa Park. So, who in particular pick, um, did you pick out tonight, Dennis? The young man we've just seen there, Lee Hendry. I mean, his touch and his, his awareness and his knowledge of the game for such a young man was outstanding. I thought that his play, if you watch here, he just holds his run, holds the edge of the box, but his first touch is great. Composure in, in the bottom corner. Super. You know, that, that's Here it is again. Yeah, he, he just holds. He's waiting for that mistake. His first touch takes him past, past head up, swatted away. And just a few seconds later, he's done it again. Yeah, he's held the edge of the box again. It's come out to him. Composure, lovely little touch. Bit of luck there with the deflection. But his first touch and his movement is, makes all the difference. But I'm bound to say, Dennis, it was only against Chester. It's all right saying that. It still doesn't take away its, its, its touch. It's his touch. It's not Chester's touch. He's got the, the ability to do that. So he impressed you. England material? Well, if England don't qualify, then you know, we've got to start looking at these young players and bringing them in and, and blooding them. And he's, he's had a little smell and he's done well. They should put him in again. OK, now, 5 nil up. Does the referee show a little bit of compassion for Luke Beckett with that penalty? Well... I would think so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, uh, I'm not the manager. I'm John Gregory's possibly saying no, he shouldn't. But first uh, time out, great finish.
first first penalty, you think he looks like a finisher. This lad, great finish, and he scored six for the team at the bottom of the league. That's good. He looks delighted. Now then he realizes, <laughs> and the fans realize, as you can see. Uh, I mean, Scott Matheson should have. Nobody else would have complained. This is an appalling penalty, whether he takes it the second time or not. The keeper's out him. We didn't know who the keeper was for most of that game. We never got down that end. Now, back to Villa. I mean, they had a serious side out tonight, didn't they? I mean, that meant a lot for them. Yeah. I mean, I think that last season they were going well. They took a gamble, put a weakened side out of Chelsea, uh, paid for it. Now they've gone, OK, this is an opportunity to build on what they've done already this season, and they're going very well again. You know, great confidence boost. Five against anybody is, is tremendous. So that sets him up right for the weekend. So he's gone, he's taken it serious, they're into the next round and uh, they're looking good. A competition that they will be looking to win, especially after perhaps learning a few lessons last year when they put out a weakened team and lost. Yeah, I think it's a competition they can win. I think you know, the, the, there is going to be uh, chances in this competition for teams like the Villa, Sunderland, uh, to go through. The ones who are not involved with Europe, it, they get a better chance uh, in this competition. And that qualifies you for Europe again. Okay, the draw.